So I bet you know when I have a chance, I'm going to just hold on mute. Because you can just search and say everything that this person is. Are we ready? Yeah. Just delete more. Yeah. Those buggers. So I'm going through it. All right. I need a motion to reconvene. Jeff, can we add on to these? We can add on to these. Yeah, for sure. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, Jeff, are you going to start to talk about the capital funding? Yeah, I'll, I'll try and do capital uh, move through fairly quickly. Um, I'm just going to talk about the sources of uh, capital funds. Okay. The first one is uh, 107844. The only thing I want to mention here, and this is something uh, I don't know if Hawken and I are, are totally settled on, but it's, it's something that you'll see in this budget. One thing I want you to recognize is that under Infrastructure Provincial, there was a list of grants we had in the previous year. Those grants have been amalgamated into one. So that's why you see a larger amount for 2016. But that also includes any carry forwards we're bringing from unexpended in previous years. and any, So anything we're bringing forward out of those group of grants. But what I want you to see is if you look at 2018, there's only 510,000 there. That does not mean that's what our allocation of MSI is. It means that's what we've budgeted to spend. So we'll talk to you about this a little bit more. We don't want to get into it too much tonight, but Hawkins is going to be proposing that we set up a separate bank account for any money that we have from grants that we're not spending or that we're holding that sits in a different bank account so it does not sit with our operational money. And it does not get absorbed and lost in the operational costs. Okay, So we'd actually like to separate that physically, as physical as you can separate money nowadays. It's all electronic. But. So the rest are just really the grants that we get. You can see what those look like on that page. And um, on 195592 over the page, uh, what you've got there is in each year, it's what we're bringing from prior reserves to fund um, fund capital. So anything that we've had from previous years is coming forward. And so that's all their, their sources of capital funds in a quick nutshell. If we move into the uses of capital funds, um, in 2016 specifically, and any anomalies in the other years, but in 2016, 212764, we've kept a chunk of money just for council approved capital. This is a contingency on the capital side, is what it is. And um, then you have the huge amounts, obviously, for Alberta disaster capital at 2.8 million. What I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to go right down this column so you know what we're talking about. Uh, capital sidewalk replacement. I didn't point it out, but in the operational side, we had 40,000 or so last in 2015 because we did a bunch of ramps. In 2016, we only have 10,000, 10, and that's because we need to replace a strip of curb and gutter on 2nd Avenue. So we took the money from there and put it in capital, and we've. Uh, Brandon's looked at the curb and gutter along third, between 3rd and 4th Street on 2nd Avenue. It needs to come out when we redo that road next year. We've kept everything to this point, but that block is it's no good. Um, Public Works Capital, a, a BOMAG 33-inch walk-behind remote control roller. We found on this project this year, we had utilities about every 12 feet that we were crossing, so we could never use our big packer. And we rented a little remote control job that did a heck of a job in those small areas. We paid like seven thousand bucks this year just to rent it. Mm -hmm. And you can buy one for fifteen. And we think we can buy one for about fifteen. Oh, right. Return on investment is pretty significant oh, there, absolutely. right? So we got a few years left of just Second Avenue alone. So I buy one, can I rent it to you? Yeah, <laughs> well, it's cheaper than what we're getting it from United. Yeah, <laughs> you'd like that. Um, the big ticket item there is uh, greater. Six wheel drive grader from uh, from Cat. Um, obviously, when the time comes, we'll get uh, as we get closer to the end of the year, we can get those quotes firmed up right to the dollar when they'll hold into the next year because they won't hold into the next year yet. We have that grader here right now, practicing on it. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they gave it to us to try out a little bit. So that's what that big item is. Um, the rest fall into the next year's. 2017 is uh, a tandem truck, a Dyna pack skid steer, the track hoe, the truck and trailer from Jerry Scott. That's a bit of a presumptuous budget line item, but let me explain. We hire Jerry's a lot every year, and he's looking to look at retirement. And Jerry takes such care of his equipment, and he's so good with his stuff, he's, he's suggested that he would let us buy it off him if we felt that was something that would be good for the town. 
when he retires. So we've got some money in there now. Uh, we don't know his number. We haven't tried to push him into retirement, but we've budgeted a number to see how that plays out. Um, mm -hmm. So the when and the amount are still up in the air a bit on that one. We've got an operator that's going to run the hole? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we'd be okay. And then uh, this one, we were having some debate on this one, but an Arctic icebreaker attachment for the grader. What this is, is we get areas, especially this street's a case in yeah. point that gets thick, thick ice. And this is an attachment that goes onto the front of the grader and breaks up the ice that compacts in those areas. And you would see that with yeah. your work, how that ice, it melts up here and then gets behind those buildings and freezes. Even on Main Street, I mean, uh, where Main Street yeah. and Fourth yeah. Avenue is, it's yeah. always yeah, so that, that's a new addition we just put in here. I gotta look at that a little more and understand it a little yeah. better and the benefit, but. Yeah, does it impact, uh, or does it have an impact on the pavement? Well, that, that's my concern. Yeah. I, I'm that's hoping that up. smarter engineers than me have got that figured out, but mm -hmm. I don't know enough about it yet, no. but it's in there. Jeff, when we talk about equipment uh, replacement, mm -hmm. are our work orders reflecting a need for replacement? Explain that just a bit, our work orders, like the work we're doing? The, no, the work orders against the equipment for repairs. Are they validating that we need to replace that piece of equipment? Oh, I see. Is the maintenance oh, increasing yeah. on some of the older stuff? Here? Yeah. Yeah, um, some of it I think we're trying to read the play a little bit, that they hit a certain age and you're going to start incurring those costs, <coughs> for, you know, dramatic and major expenses on some of those things. Um, right now our fleet's in relatively uh, good shape and good age. We, we have good equipment right now, and that's improved a lot over the last six or eight years. Now, is, is, our, uh, is our repair shop sending away oil for analysis oh, and, and then oil changes and stuff like that? Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So that's, uh, let me see where we're, new pavement. Uh, so new pavement for 2016 is is uh, Second Ave West third to fifth, and then it follows on fifth to seventh, and then seventh to ninth. So that's just Second Avenue two blocks at a time, continuing to follow. Water Capital for 2016, you see Second Avenue West fourth to fifth. We didn't forget about third to fourth because that's already been replaced in the in the recent time. So we don't have to do water on between third and fourth. We can just tie into the newly replaced stuff on that block. We will be doing sewer on that block. We don't have to do water. And a Gen <coughs> for the 7th Avenue booster station. Now you've seen Gen sets in this year too. We're trying to get backup generators at our booster stations, particularly for fire flow in case of an emergency. So if we didn't have power, um, we need to keep adequate fire flow at different areas. Taking the ski jump out of that. Uh, oh, on 2nd Avenue? Avenue? Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much fun. Yeah, it's a good okay. speed bump. Um, 2017, you'll see. On Water Capital, you see uh, Second Avenue plays a big role in 2017 for water, and then in 2018, Sixth Street West uh, water lines. So those are water line. Uh, there's no extensions. Oh, there is one. The Atkins subdivision next year. So if you flip over and we continue on Capital, uh, Sanitary Sewer, of course, Second Avenue on uh, Sludge Pump and 2nd Avenue in 2016, 2nd Avenue in 2017, and... Uh, Sorry, just to back up to the Atkins, yeah. is that rollover from this year? Yeah. Okay, all right, so it's not additional. Yeah, we've already got that set. We've had that for a few years, actually. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Ellison subdivision. I'm sorry? The Ellison subdivision. Yeah. So the Ellison subdivision That's project, good question. What that is, is if you go at the golf course there, no. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So if you go past where all those houses are, there's intended to be a cul-de-sac there. Yeah. We'd like to loop the water line from there back into where the development's happening by Darren and Shelley okay. to get better pressure and better circulation through okay. there. That's what that is. It's a looping of the lines. Gotcha. Uh, sanitary sewer, like we talked about, Second Avenue. Um, really, it's a lot of Second Avenue and then Sixth Street West. So Second Avenue should be done through Ninth by 2018. Um, a couple blocks a year. Uh, sanitary to sewer extensions, there's really nothing of consequence for three years in there. Garbage capital is our regular bin purchases. Um, weed spraying capital, we're fine now. We have the equipment we need for that. Planning capital, that West Industrial Engineering for 2016 is just coming forward from 2015. So there's no money tax for there. Parks capital, we have a, a mower replacement, a small mower in, uh, in 2016. Redford Irrigation, it's a hydraulic system and you can't, it's an obsolete system, they've got to change that to electric. 
And then this is the li our portion of the Lions Park top lot if the Rotarians' money all comes together. Right. So we've committed a certain amount to them. And then in 2018, you've got um, some walking trail and campground playground in 2018 in the parks. Pool is the building reno for the next couple of years. That's really the only focus there. Ice Center you see is Zamboni in 2017 and changing some floor matting out in 2018. That's one that I think we'll be able to find some good grants for the floor matting, the recycled rubber, recycled tire stuff. I think we can mm -hmm. do some good work there. Zambonis are that much money, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, it's a racket. It's a racket. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Civic Center Capital, this is that electronic marquee in 2016. There's been a lot of discussion and it's part of the communication plan that Graham presented about putting that up. So he had a quote on that before he left. So that's where you see that item in the, in the capital budget. <coughs> um, oh, we have a miss, uh, how can we got a mislabeled account? 272727 is Gulf Force, not Civic Center. Yes, Gulf Force. <laughs> what are we doing with that? There's been some talk, and I don't whole think this is settled just yet. It'll all see the whole 16 and 17. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be a long drive. <laughs> we don't want to show expenses at the golf course. We're just sloughing it through the Civic Center. Um, <laughs> no, just a bit. Yeah. There's been some discussion about potentially needing to relocate that. The current group isn't pushing that right now. No. They don't see that as a priority. So we've pushed it off a couple of years, and we'll see how the ground reacts over the next couple of years. By the way, 200,000 won't, won't relocate that yeah, one. Nope. <laughs> but uh, we'll find out what that looks like later. Uh, light capital, this is essentially the, the first two lines of 160, and then uh, 35 is really all the conversion. Uh, a truck in there, LED lighting, those are fairly consistent, a lot of those, in the Atkins subdivision. Now let me say this, you know that we are looking at some options with electrical. We're obviously not going to commence with a bunch of capital spending on, say, a truck if we're going to change how we're running the electrical department. But we budgeted based on status quo. So we budgeted based on that. Our, our labor budgets reflect that. Capital budgets reflect that. So that's how we're budgeting. And you'll see that those numbers carry through fairly consistently through the years, and they're mostly all on the conversion. Um, and that is with one little... Weird exception hanging out there, Hawking of 12,000. I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the tanner land. For what now? We bought the tanner land. Okay. In 2000. Oh, it's in 15. Oh. It's done anyway. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that was yeah. the tanner land. Okay. So that is capital, uh, capital expenditures for 2016, mm -hmm. 17, 18. Now, we recognize that. Um, the 2016 is almost 5 million, but keep in mind that's all that two point eight million dollars of creek, creek rehabilitation. And we okay, got the so. approval on that, the money allotted to us right. Say that again, do we have, have we got the, the money we have partials? partials. partials. We have six hundred thousand dollars out of that. We have six hundred thousand. They weren't gonna release any more until the budget and everything like that. Okay. So you can see we're doing between one and a half and if we take out the creek two point one million each of the three years mm -hmm. in capital expenditures. And so we feel that's a a pretty good amount that we're taking on, um, and that is both items. Jeff, I wanted to ask way back the very first time. Yep. We uh, twelve thousand five hundred and ten for the history of Cardston. Yes. Is that Doctor Godfrey's? Uh, yes. Yep. Just what it is. Right. And are we going to get a report on that? Oh, well, we should get he, a he full wanted, look on he that. He wanted to come and meet yeah. with council. Yeah, he's, he's moving into phase two, which was the interview stage. So he was up doing a lot of investigation work and history work this summer. Now he's starting to set up interviews with people. Um, so he'll probably be back this summer. Good. Yeah. He's also looking for interesting stories for the area. So if you know of any, you can just send the information. Yeah. So, so there's, there's your first book. Yes. <coughs> In the end? Yeah. He says his books don't come too quickly. Yeah, it yeah. takes its time. Okay, councillors, we need to uh, know for administration, is there something in that budget that is glaring at you that you want So we took some notes on things like operational res or reserving for some of those right. recreation, non-infrastructure based things. We, we certainly heard that. Um, I got a couple follow-up items and some direction. 
Uh, as per policy, the second meeting in November will be the second look at the budget. Right. So we have a month between now and then. If there's some feedback, something that's bugging you, something we didn't get thought about, by all means, let us know. That'll be done during a regular council meeting? Yep, yeah, that'll be a second it's meeting. Three weeks from now. Yeah. Yeah. What's that, Councilor? Three weeks from now. Well, whatever the second meeting in November is. Yeah. It should be a month from now. Okay. Okay. Yes, so along those lines, um, we have, you know, I'm not pushing for this in a big way, but I know it kind of it crept into our discussions this year, and it, it'll probably recur next year. And that is, you know, kind of the uh, the request that we had to maybe aid and beef up security on Main Street. Right. If there we, is something there. Well, there I, I saw. Is. Are you in? There the, is something. The there is about officer. twelve. Initiatives, peace officer initiative. It was eleven thousand dollars somewhere, and then. So we still have it's under two two one seven. Well, it's a transfer to the board, I guess. But let me look at that. It's under which? No, let, let me. It should have been a recall because I two two one seven six five. But where's the expense on that? Not the reserve. Um, oh yeah, it's right there. So. Two two one two oh one. Okay, there was uh, the ten thousand dollars is two two one seven six five. Yeah. There was moved from two two one uh two oh one and so it's ten thousand dollars towards a security initiative camera for two thousand sixteen, oh, seventeen yeah, and eighteen. Yeah. So they're they're right there, Councillor Bangry. In okay. that Yeah. In that is that okay? Yes. That's what you were right okay. Yeah, Council Peter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Sorry. And then I, if we were if we were going to consider again, I, who did we hire this time? We called in some people from the commissioners. The commissioners. The commissioners. Yeah. And yeah. did that is that reflected on the so 2015? So one I discussion I want to have with council not here is what we want to do with that position, what we want to do with Horton, what we want to do with commissioners. But it's, I don't want to have that conversation no. now. But at our planning session. So we have budgeted some money, what we've budgeted for our, li our liaison officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to have some frank discussion about where we're going with that. Mm -hmm. So there is some yeah. money for those kind of initiatives, however we decide to roll that out. Okay, so it's in there. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right, any other questions? Like I said, you got time, hit us up over the month and, and we'll do what we can. We're still Thank gonna you. be playing with it too, I'm sure. Thank you so much. So and, uh, no, go ahead. I, uh, Ask Jeff, Jeff, those figures look just, just too nice, too, too good. Uh, where's the double whammy? They say, well, I tried to find it, I couldn't find it either. Hopefully it'll um, come out in the next month. <laughs> <laughs> the final so, round will have all kinds of surprises. Yeah, that's right. It's it, a huge it almost, almost made me nervous it looked so good. <laughs> but thank you, Hawkins, for having taken the initiative to really create more transparency in that budget. I like the way it's reflected into this document. Thank you so much. <coughs> All right, uh, we need to recom, no, refine. <coughs> we need to do eight, no, hold on a second, where am I? Seven, Seven B. B. utility rate. So we you speak into it? that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So after we talked about the utility rates bylaw um, at the last council meeting, was it? I can't remember. Um, council expressed some sentiments that uh, you know we wanted to. One thing was we didn't want to see such a steep increase. Uh, another thing was that we kind of wanted to go away from the flat rate increases and go to more of a consumption-based uh, model. Um, and we wanted to do something about the volume discount for institutional users, but uh, we didn't want to, at the same time, give an unfair break to the small institutional users. And we didn't, at the same time, want to um, place too heavy of a burden on the larger institutional users. So I've put together this executive summary um, of our utility rates bylaw amendment and I just wanted to touch on a few of those highlights. 
I've adjusted some of the rates uh, to reflect the sentiments of council. Uh, so as far as residential users are concerned, they'll see a flat rate increase of 75 cents per month. So, so that takes their flat rate from 1850 a month to $19.25 a month in 2016. And then in 2017, it levels off at 20 bucks and there's no flat rate increase after that. Um, there will be, uh, in the proposed rates, uh, annual consumption-based uh, increases of three cents per month in 2016, six cents a month in 2017, and nine cents a month in 2018. And the increasingly higher increase is to, I guess, compensate for the flat rate increase going away. So, in, in a little bit, I'll comment on where that puts your typical user, and then also where the distribution of the billings sits with, with these rates. Uh, just, sorry, is that on top of? So where you say three, then six, once all the threes are added together, and then we bump to six more? So what it, for a residential user, what it does is it takes you from to the, now, in 2015, you're at 82 cents per cubic meter, and then it goes to 85, and then to 91, and then to a dollar per cubic meter by 2018. So, Institutional users, there there was this scaled uh, schedule of, of rates, and it went uh, twenty to fifty cubic meters. It was, this year it's two dollars and three cents, and then from fifty to a hundred, I believe, it goes a dollar seventy three, and then it keeps going down after that. <coughs> so, what I've built in here is from twenty to fifty cubic meters. Uh, these institutional rate payers, they still pay a similar rate. It, it would be two dollars and ten cents a cubic meter. Um, and then for anything over that, they pay a dollar seventy-five. So if you're a large user, let's say you use four hundred cubic meters a month, you pay that two dollars and ten cents. That's what they're used to paying uh, on the first. Well, on the first 20 cubic meters, they don't pay anything extra, but on f for 20 to 50, they pay $2.10, what they're used to. And then um, from 50 to 100, they were used to paying $1.73, they'd be paying $1.75. After 100, it would, they're used to it going down, but it's gonna stay the same. Right. So they're gonna see an increase in their overall rate, or their the overall dollar amount that they're paying uh, because of that, while the smaller institutional <coughs> user is going to be business as usual, because they're they're not using enough to put them into those higher rates or um, brackets. So, how many very large users do we have? Four. No, no, there's Four. about very large uh, users. Large okay. users. There's right. I have. I had it. Uh, I didn't bring that the with me, but it's it's probably about twenty. There's okay. about yeah. There's about forty institutional users, and about half of them are quite large. Okay, so that's the institutions. Yeah. yeah okay. All right. Thank you. Um. So I think the other highlight to make from this change in the utility rate bylaw is the connection fees. What we did was we reviewed the costs for, to us, of, of making the connection fees. And what we found was that there was a handful of them that were nowhere near cost recovery. So, especially in uh, commercial electrical. Um, but starting off, water wastewater uh, we were, we've been charging $3,200 for a connection. 
uh, the cost, the average cost is about 5,000. So we're proposing a rate increase to 5,000 for that. Quick question on that. Did we look at what other communities are charging for comparative? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know off the top of my head what they're charging. We more or less focused on cost recovery. Our costs for it. Well, I, and the reason I bring it up is, you know, I'm looking at a, la a lot here in Cardston, I'm looking at a lot in McGrath, and then I find out, hey, it's half to connect to everything if I build McGrath. So boom, now I'm moving to McGrath. <laughs> so maybe we just want to watch out for that so we don't chase off potential move-ins and stuff. Okay, Councillor, please. Uh, yeah, uh, and I'm maybe addressing this to Jeff, and this, this isn't water, but you mentioned electrical as well. And it seems like the, the, our council had a discussion a year ago on, on investigating a, an investment policy, uh, you know, for electrical connections, you know, because Ford, Ford is, they have a big investment. And uh, so I, I, I don't know where, where that uh, is reflected in uh, as we look at these rates and these, especially the connections. I'd rather subsidize them on the move in and then kill them on consumption. <laughs> <laughs> Bait and switch is that? What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. well, um, on the uh, investment, we were waiting for Pinoca to finalize theirs. They're another AMPS community that we're looking at doing a municipal investment program. So they've just—it was probably two months ago—they finished theirs, and so I have a copy of their bylaw, and uh, it's it's one of those things. Now that they're done, we'll try and see if we can put something that mimics that as well. Now that investment program may just end up mitigating the extra charge back to what it was, mm -hmm. potentially. Uh, I haven't looked at that really closely yet, what the impact of that investment would be. Um, but yes, it, we were kind of letting Pinoca work out the bugs and then getting their bylaw from them, so they just got that done. So there is a question for council. Do you feel we should look at other communities' rate? For connections, I just like is to that know. something curious. that you want to do and uh, see if it works? Just to although, see. Although, although we, we know we know what it costs us. Right. That's what it costs us. Mm -hmm. So you want to still have a comparative? Is I that what I hear? Okay. If it I don't know. My my feeling is this: if that's what if it it's costs. What it costs is what it costs. Yeah, it should it be well, should be paying it. Uh, yeah. But uh, there is a point also. Yeah, the the, the the point that you made that that's one of the things that people will look at when they're considering which, buying a lot. Which was the story of that fellow that the commercial yeah. had the commercial yeah. building, right? right? That was really what made it or bro broke the deal. Right. And we don't want to have to have every single one of those coming to council. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, that's the... Okay. <laughs> so maybe, how can if you can, next time around, uh, give us a little bit of a sense of comparative things. Okay. <clears throat> um, so our in-town residential electrical connection fees were actually really close to what they cost us. And so... There's really no change there. The rural residential, however, uh, yeah. charging about 3,200, and we should be charging about 7,000. And those can vary quite a bit as well, but on average, that's what we figured. Light commercial, we're charging 4,100. A typical connection would be 11,000. Light commercial, three phase, we're charging 5,500. We probably should be charging about 15,000. Mm. So, so we are subsidizing an awful lot of those costs. Which three phases what they wanted up here. Yeah. If I might, Madam Mayor, to be clear on that one, that the connection fee didn't come into play there because they already had electricity. Right. They just needed but to upgrade the current infrastructure. So what we do on that is it's really just on a quote basis, which is what we did right. for them. We just gave them a quote on doing it. The connection fee was already historically paid, so it didn't factor in this, this occasion. So if, if you want to look at uh, what these proposed rates do to our, our typical users, uh, typical residential user, 15 cubic meters a month, uh, their monthly bill would go from 87 to 90 to 93 to 96, so a fairly modest, basically a $3 a month increase each year. Um, 
and these these rates here are already reflected in the budget that we that Jeff just presented. Institutional, 50 cubic meters a month, so a small institutional, their rate would go from 164 this year to 171, 178, 184. So about a six or seven dollar increase a year. If you're a larger institutional user, uh, a month, you mean? Hmm. Yeah, that's a, an error. <laughs> In any case, if you're a large institutional user, you would see um, there would be a, a hike in 2016, and then after that it would level off. So okay. it would be kind of a band-aid approach to that one. Uh, I apologize, I have the wrong number. In Do you recall that it was like 10%, 15%? Uh, it was about a 10% increase, and it was maybe 11% or 12%. Some of those institutions understand 10% hikes, so it should be fine. So anyway, um, I also looked at the fairness of the billing distribution. What I mean, what I mean by that is, you know, if you're using 10% of the total water of the town, then you should be paying for about 10% of the costs of running the system. And what we found was that we actually have a really, really close distribution, a very equitable distribution. There's a couple of anomalies. For example, if you look at residential uh, in-town water usage, that accounts for 64% of the water usage and 64% of our uh, water revenues come from those users. So it's almost an identical match. They're paying for exactly what they use. Um, the anomalies here would be yeah. institutional and commercial mm -hmm. uh, for water. Institutional, um, they use 18% of the, our total water usage and they're only paying for 11%. Commercial, uh, they're, they're using, you know, if you want to include commercial uh, on the reserve, they're using 12% and they're paying for 8 so who is subsidizing them? It's the flat rate users, those that uh, won't install meters. And they're using about 5% of our total water amount and they're paying 16%. So we penalize them heavily. That's excellent. But um, with, with these rates, uh, you've seen how the budget looks. This would be the effect on the users and you, this gives you an idea of, of uh, whether it's equitably distributed. So with that, um, we would welcome any feedback you might have. Personally, I think you've done a very good job of analyzing the issue. You took in consideration what we gave you for feedback, and the only thing is a connection feed, and I think we have a very good draft. Okay. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'd like to bring this back even the first meeting in November for a reading. Mm -hmm. um, yes. This may be one that you want to have a public hearing on. I think we should. Yeah. So we'd like to have that public hearing if we could the end of November. <coughs> um, so we'll, we're going to aim, we'll, we'll work out a couple details on the uh, connection fees. We'll bring those back to committee in November. Mm -hmm. because I'd really like to have a first reading. Then if after the meet, second meeting in November, we can do second and third reading, we can give NMAX notice of rate changes so that the building can take effect as early January. as possible in January. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just to, did you say we were going to do second and third reading in the second meeting of November? If, if the public if hearing were to come up benign, you know, then you could do second and third reading. public hearing be scheduled? At that well, same meeting. At the same meeting. Yes. Yeah. That'd be the ninth. So we usually no, do it. No, no, no. So second, second 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 meeting. Meeting. Yeah, so you would call first reading in the first council meeting in November. That's right. second. In the second, second meeting in November, you, you would have your public hearing. Okay. And, and then, then if there was nothing major, right. you would have the third, discretion second, to then pass second, third reading the end of November. Yeah. Right. So long you have your public hearing first. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I'll look at that. I, I don't know that. This is this might be a required one, but even if it's not, you still may want to. Mm -hmm. 
It affects your whole public quite broadly. Yeah. I think I think so. Rest pretty. Yeah. Pretty sure. That's what we want. Yeah. So we'll plan on that. Now, are we planning a public hearing on the land use by one? Right about the same time. Well, that's probably right in there yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Thinking, yeah. Yeah. I already know that meeting's getting together and right? busy. Okay. That, that meeting's getting yeah. packed. And it'll be the second budget presentation, too. <laughs> but all we'll do is present differences between this presentation and that one. I mean, that, that'll be 15 minutes, right? It should be fairly quick. Yeah, that's okay. going to be a busy meeting, your second meeting in November. Yeah, I mean, every week we say, oh, it's going to be a... What's the, uh, what's the Civic Center doing? The downstairs that, that week. If we get a good enough crowd, we might want to... Oh, well, we can put a lot of people. If you have a crowd that doesn't fit in here, we better revisit that bylaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, a good one. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have some questions there. Uh, Councilor Edmund, Councilor Tweed. Well, we extend the meeting for half an hour. Yeah, uh, uh, that was. That was. Oh, you guessed Rush o'clock. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. We still have quite a bit to go. Um, seven, seven C. The signage, uh, election signage bylaw. So we need to uh, receive third reading on this bylaw. I'll, I'll do third reading for the election signage bylaw. Thank you. Any questions? I think it's really we had quite a few good discussion on it. All in favor? Thank you. Passed. Eight. So we now need to do the uh, business portion of our meeting that deals with organizational meeting. Yeah, I move to adjourn to the organizational meeting. Thank you. So we will now call uh, the meeting of the organizational meeting from for Calston Town Council this. 27th day of October to order. So the first thing we will need to look at is the bylaw that governs us, governs this body, which is bylaw 1628. In that bylaw, uh, administration has brought forward a proposed amendment. And uh, Jeff, do you want to talk about sure. this amendment, if you don't mind? Yeah, this is not a, a must-do item. You can amend your bylaw at any time. But, and by the way, I don't want anyone making any motions to amend the bylaw in your organizational meeting. You can just discuss that. But um, it, it came up at one of our meetings about this notion of uh, a notice of motion, potentially. If a councillor, and thankfully we don't have the, the issue now, but looking at governance in the future, if a councillor feels that agenda item isn't being you know, entertained, they can make a notice of motion and that item will be on the next agenda subject to debate at council. So I just had a little blurb that could go under subsection 14 that when one member of council feels an issue is not being heard by the chair, the councillor can make a notice of motion giving notice to the rest of council that the matter is to be on the upcoming agenda or upon the most reasonable subsequent agenda as mutually agreed by the chair and the councillor. The notice of motion is not to be debated and the subject is to be on the subsequent agenda wherein it will be subject to debate and vote of the entire council at that time. Again, not that we're dealing with the current issue, but if it ever came up, it was a piece that was discussed and this is a good time for us to review that bylaw. So I throw it out there for your feedback. If you don't mind that amendment, then I will incorporate it into the bylaw. In fact, what I'll do, Councillor, for making any amendments, we already made an amendment to the, um, the agenda. I'll probably just do a new bylaw and bring all the amendments in under the new bylaw. So that was one thing I just thought we've kicked around a few times. From a governance point of view, I think it's not a bad idea to have this. It protects all councillors and gives them all a voice. <clears throat> and I think the more we can protect that right of having a voice, the better we will be at a council. Uh, I think it's, a, it's not a bad thing to have. I would support that. How do you feel? I, I, would, I agree with Jeff's uh, comments regarding it's not an issue for this council. No. Uh, but you never know in a future council, and I think it's a great great thing to have in there for a governance perspective. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so I'll I think your direction would be to amend this bylaw and bring it back to council. 
So the second one was simply, and this is semantics only. Do we want to change anywhere it's referencing CCW to governance and, prior, and policy committee? Okay, I, now, I personally um, don't care. <laughs> personally, it doesn't bother me either, but I know that Councillor Barnes preferred governance and policy committee, meaning that's the essence of our meeting. Uh, committee of the whole means that we look at those items as a whole council, that's what it means. Essentially, totally one same. look at the form, one looks at the content, same kind of idea. <coughs> so change or no change, personally I don't see the need for change. It's six no. and one half dozen, okay. I really don't care. Yeah, it's All form right. or content, but mm -hmm. essentially same okay. story. That's fine. Okay, so this is dealt with. But let George know, we, we almost call it the George Cuff Committee. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't feel like we're not taking him seriously. Yeah. I don't think he's following up to <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Councillors, there is in your bylaw uh, 1628 a description of when we are holding our meetings and uh, uh, the time of our meetings, day and time. Is the way we are doing it now satisfactory to all of you? Meaning, 4 o'clock for the CCW, 5 o'clock for council, 1st, 2nd, 3rd is when we meet. Are we, 1st, uh, 2nd, and 4th? Yeah. Are we okay with that? I, I just had a question. What, what was the reasoning for a 4 o'clock meeting for the CCW? Yeah. Yeah, at the time the intent was that we were going to, we were intending at the time. Now we could have a long debate about the intention of CCW versus the practice of CCW. The intention was we could have staff here more often. Essentially, we wanted to have report from yeah. from the managers of the different... And they uh, here at that time. And they yeah. were there, that was the end of the day. A half an hour at the end of that day, yeah. Yeah. they were able to be yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. That's that all was the purpose. All the time. Uh, is the purpose the same today? Yes and no. Yeah. I also recall we were putting, we would, it was the intention that we'd have public hearings then, and those could go long, so to start yeah. a little earlier. Yeah. It was that? also the idea that it is a work meeting, yeah. it might be longer than a regular yeah, meeting, right. but still yeah. allow us by the 8 o'clock to be done. Yeah. So essentially, right. that was the idea. <laughs> Come on, Councillor, we're not doing bad. Have you seen some of those other towns that meet for five hours? We're not like our, 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 our we not, we shall not. We shall not. go past 10 o'clock. We <laughs> shall not name anything. After 10 o'clock, we toast. Yeah, let's not push those limits tonight. All right. <laughs> there are some, so if I hear you well, we're keeping it away. Yeah, we're fine, fine. So there's a few more items of business we need to look at. Is the date that we need to approve uh, the dates that we will not be in session. And you have them on your... It's, on your, it's 4A. Uh, 4A. 4A. Yeah, 4A. Okay, if you have them... CCW. Jeff, do you want to maybe... Yeah, so very quickly... Um, so, so we this, can have the motion yeah. after... I, well, what I, I told Tara is just take... Yeah, I'll read it quick. So basically that you would cancel the CCW meeting scheduled for December 1st would be canceled. Now the reason that your um, second council meeting in December isn't on this one is that you canceled it last time you did this. Right. But you didn't catch the CCW meeting. Yeah. So right now you're set for just one meeting in December. I believe it's the 8th. So are you so comfortable with that? Yeah. 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 Are you comfortable with that, Jeff? Yeah, you we'll feel fine. we'll be able to... Yep. I think once we get through that end of November, we're, we should be okay. Okay. You, okay. Ha you need to meet then because you got to pass your budget then. Right. But that's a whole point. So December 8th would be the only meeting in December. Uh, CCW canceled for July of 2016. Just hang on a second. Yeah. My, why why do we cancel that CCW meeting the first of the first of the month? Do we not still have things that we have to work on, or okay. we got all that stuff done? Okay. Uh, Councillor, this is a very good point. This is why yeah. I'm asking a chef, in November, have we covered enough of the basis, which is essentially the budget yeah. we are dealing with? We have to focus on that. That's our full focus right now, right up to the end of December. Yeah. Well, 
And That's our focus. I might add that if, it, if we don't have the budget done by then, CCW doesn't allow us to pass anything anyway. We can't do oh, it. Well, that's true. Right. You know, so I understand that. So it's just been historical. There's a yeah. lot of people doing parties and family things and group things, company things. In December, it gets a little hectic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they've canceled it historically. I mean, if I'm, you want I'm to work that day, day we, yeah. we are uh, very agreeable to work that day. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, I'm fine either way. Well, it doesn't mean either. I'm just wondering, you know, if we last year we done it that way. If we have stuff to do, we can be there. But it, I guess that could be a meeting that could call it necessary. Yeah, or if you're prepared to go now, <coughs> on the eighth too. Yeah, I got. You yeah, know, okay. Tavares used to say, he said it has to be an awfully good meeting to be better than no meeting at all. So we may have a bit of a lengthy meeting on the eighth potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we've done it in the past. I think we've been okay. Yeah. I think to slow down in December is not a bad thing. Do we have a date for the town party yet? For we'll have it soon. Okay. All um, right. So, no, it's not. <laughs> the only other things that are, the, the other things is for July and August of 2016, the CCW generally has been canceled. Yes. The, okay. the first council meeting, so the second week has started at 4 p.m., mm -hmm. and the last meeting has been canceled. Yes. Um, and then in, uh, that's all, that's what this contains. And there's August. The one, one, the, well, August the same, July and August the same. No one CCW, council meeting one council meeting month. starting earlier. In, in the summer but month. no CCW. No CCW. No. Yeah. And if you recall, in the summertime, most of your committees are not meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and so quiet. it's a good time if you need to take holidays with your family to have a break. Well, we got all those parades and stuff during those months. There is quite a bit in August. In August, we're all very busy with all sorts of activities. Yeah. So that's the meeting changes, and we're required so, to advertise those once they're passed. So we need a motion for this. Yeah, we do have a motion in this meeting. Yes, right. um, um, meeting. No, you can make a motion for that in this, in this meeting, meeting, actually. That yeah. is I just meeting. didn't want to affect any bylaws within this yeah. meeting. That's no. right. Councilor Bangry? I'll make the motion that we... Uh, I've got it all written out if you yeah. just want to make that Accept motion. Accept the schedule. Accept the schedule meetings for the upcoming year as per the bylaw, which includes the following changes. Okay. Yeah, so council. That's good. All in uh, favor? Okay. Thank you. All right. Now, there is something else we need to work with. Is if you turn to the page, Deputy Mayor Assignment, we are uh, legally uh, bound to. What page is that? It's a uh, three A, councillor. To appoint to appoint the new uh, deputy mayor, and uh, it's the time to thank councillor Bangri for his good watch, making sure that uh, I was not faltering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, being willing to serve one, uh, and if I was not able to, so we need to make an official motion to call on Councillor Bill Treed for from November 2015 to June 2016 as Deputy Mayor, and we also need to call on Councillor David Edmonds to serve from July 2016 to February 2017. I can make Jeff. one small correction. Okay. The motion is to assign them as chair of the committee. Uh, chair. Chair. They've already been assigned as chair deputy mayor. Chair of the committee of the board. Yeah, you passed Correct. the deputy mayor assignment last year. So this Correct. is this is assigned them as chair. Okay, all right. So I stand to be corrected. Thank you. And I so move. Okay, Councillor Peabody is moving that we appoint Councillor Bill Tweed as Chair of the Committee of the Whole from November 2015 to June 2016 and Councillor David M. Edmonds from July 2016 to February 2017. But concluded in that, we need to make sure that it is for an eight month period. Yeah, that's what it is. It's all sorted. It's all sorted. Yeah. Yeah. It's by giving the date. It yeah. Yeah, we're sort of, she gets away with two Okay. Days, though, All in favor? Days. All in favor? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. And he doesn't and, have to uh, start September. <laughs> Councillor Creed uh, officially yeah, uh, point you yeah. as the <laughs> November 11th uh, MC. Okay, yeah. yeah. As part of December. your official duty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good plan. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to assign 
All right. So now we're going to talk about the assignments and the changes that have been made. I know some of you are happy with your changes, some maybe not so. But I try to at least respect the changes that you have asked me to make from the paper you gave me. So I'm going to read them as I stand, and uh, I will uh, comment on a couple that are written on your sheet. Library Board, Councillor David Edmonds, Andy Burs, Councillor Rob Balfus, FCSS, Councillor We missed one. No. Chinook Arch. Arch. Uh, okay, so this is one that uh, error that needs to be fixed, that's why I didn't talk about it. It's uh, Councillor Edmonds who will have to okay. deal with this yeah, one. The same as that. Uh, yeah, which is, I gave it to him, but it was not fixed on the paper. That's why I didn't talk about it. <laughs> well, I just noticed it. Yeah. No, it's, it's okay. I can't. So when you so pass the motion, just it. pass as amended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, and we'll as amended. Yeah. Okay. Okay, FCSS. I have some dates for you, Dave. Okay. Okay. FCSS, Councillor Richard Bangry, Economic Development and Tourism. Councillor Rob Balfus. Just a quick question on that one. In the past, we've had Jeff listed there. It makes sense that he's not now. But is the intention that we will get someone from the office to represent the town office? There, there will probably be some fairly significant changes coming. Yeah, I, I think board. we'll see the whole this whole bylaw around this committee change. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Emergency Advisory Committee: Mayor Maggie Cronin and Councillor Dennis Barnes. Mormon Trail Committee, Councillor Richard Benbury. The power is one that I need to explain to you. Uh, I, my name is Standing, Mayor Maggie Cronin. The two councillors down there, I can't remove them directly from their paper because we need to pass uh, uh, the terms of reference and change the term of reference in order to make, make it uh, legal. So you will have to be there for the change of the term of reference, and then you will be okay. But so we won't be able to do that until January. At all. So are, are, are those two the, the ones that will be on it? Or? No, uh, I'll be on it. Just one person? At problem? this point, and we will have people from the community, okay. which are not listed yet. Okay. Um, communities in blue, Councillor Bill Creed, Historical Society, Councillor Richard Bendry. Municipal Subdivision and Developer Authority, Councillor Dennis Barnes, and Councillor Bill P. Royal, alternate. For well, that, or you'll have to notify ORSC. Yes. Otherwise, you won't have any voting privileges. Okay. Yes, that's correct. And uh, you will have to have the two members listed. No, but we one both attend that meeting together? No. Or just one or the other? One or the other, and, and uh, you can alternate. That's the second thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll always be together. But meetings. we'll be on the Municipal Subdivision yeah. and Development That's right. Authority yeah. meetings. Okay. Yeah. okay. Citizen of the Year, Mayor Maggie Cronin, Community Future, Alberta Southwest Region, Councillor Dave Edmonds, and uh, his uh, director right now, if I remember right, Councillor? Yep. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. South Grove, Mayor Maggie Cronin, and I'm also on the board of the executive. Chinook Foundation, Councillor Richard Bangry and Councillor Bill Creed. I know Councillor P. Boyd, that you will set to root this, this one, but uh, I will uh, give you a little bit of information now. I'll take it from Well, it's good in um, your good hands. Uh, thank you. Mayor, I'm going to be excused for a bit. Thank you. Councilman County Emergency Services Authority, Councillor Rob Balfus and Councillor Dennis Barnes. Edna Levitt Irrigation District, Councillor Rob Balfus. Chief Mountain Solid Waste Authority. Can, can I say one thing before we move on there? The, the emergency services is not always the first Thursday. It's on yeah. November 18th. I think it is. We will. Uh, I think it's but I'll find out and let you know. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bill P. Roy for uh, 
Not necessarily waste. I have a whole bunch of stuff for you. Okay. <laughs> Agricultural Society, <coughs> Councillor David Edmonds, Intermunicipal Development Plan Committee, Mayor Maggie Cronin, Councillor Bill Creek, Councillor Bill Pivoy, Parks and Rec Committee, Councillor Dennis Barnes, Airport, Councillor David Edmonds, Audit Committee, uh, Mayor Maggie Cronin, Councillor Rob Office, Councillor Dennis Barnes, uh, police ad hoc committee is an ad hoc committee, which means that it is not really a committee that has a constitution per se. So right now we have uh, Mayor Maggie Cron and Councillor Bill Creed on this one. Alberta Southwest, Councillor Bill Pugoy. The next So Councillor uh, Bangreen is <coughs> welcome no longer on that one. Yes, correct. We do need yeah. a little bit of a change. Employee Negotiation Committee, this is to be uh, accepted by the committee, uh, by the council. That was the, the committee that did the last you guys negotiation. Are awesome. And if you uh, feel that this committee needs to retain that, uh, that uh, position of negotiation, then we'll gladly do so. Are you all right with that? Yeah, we need Okay. We, had, we had a great chair. So, <laughs> yeah. so we will, we will keep right this <laughs> this way. Um, they can beat on the little guy. We need a motion to approve this uh, listing as amended. Just one other thing on there. The uh, Historical Society meets now on the fourth Thursday. Not, is the time to fix them. So look at your old committee and make sure that they are correct. The ORSC meets quarterly. Okay, so ORSC is. But yeah, ORSC is the so Chinook Arts three times a year. Okay. Plus a Christmas party. Okay, hold on a second. Don't go so fast. Chinook Arts. <laughs> Uh, so it's quarterly. Yes, quarterly. And I think it's the first first Thursday. First Thursday at what time? At seven. Oh no, yeah, he's talking about horse right now. Mm -hmm. Oh. But Chinook Arch does kind of meet quarterly. <laughs> Do you have <laughs> a, a fixed date or not? This this guy knows. For what? Chinook Arch. Chinook Arch. They they meet three times a year, and then for Christmas, and then they have yeah, Christmas but party. Yeah, that's quarterly. We got their Christmas parties on the so, one on the twenty seventh. Yeah, but can you give me the regular day? They don't. It's okay. They so let us know when it's happening. It's as called. As called. Yes. Okay. Three times a year. Thank you. So, uh, Jeff, I would imagine that you are going to send all those changes to the different organizations. Yeah, we'll get notice. Yeah. Yes. I'll uh, move that uh, we accept these as amended then. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. We still have, we still have our ability to vote. All right. So that's pretty good. Councillors, I want to thank you so, uh, so much for all the work you have done. Make sure that the transition is happening in a fairly quick manner. Uh, I want to make sure that all of you are up to speed when it comes to going to the next meeting of those different committees and that you understand the issues. If you understand the issues, you will go well prepared to discuss and to uh, help the organization. And as you know, you're part of a uh, committee, means you're loyal to the committee, your first hat is to that committee, but you also have the second hat that you wear as a counselor that is a fiduciary responsibility that you carry with you at all times, which means that at the table, make sure that you debate the issues. All of you have a requisition to be responsible for. 
So make sure that you discuss those items of budget at the table so that when a requisition comes at council, we should be able to approve it. Because you would have done your job to really express your sentiment, the sentiment of council at the table. If you've done that, we shouldn't have any difficulty with committee and a requisition. That's really what I would like to see. Okay? Thank you for your reporting. I appreciate all the hard work that you have done, and I wish you all well. Thank you. Okay, we need to reconvene. I will move that uh, we reconvene oh. back to the regular council meeting. Thank you. All in favor? All right. Uh, 8C, Alberta Transportation, Gazette Speed. If you could see, it has to do with the uh, the overpass and uh, the change in speed from 100 kilometer an hour to 80 kilometer on the largest portion and 60 kilometer an hour to the latter portion going north. So the reason that this is requested and for us to entertain that change is because uh, the Ministry of uh, Transportation has received many, many concerns of the people who live around that area and uh, really feel that their concerns are justifiable. When you post a speed of 100 km an hour, it's 120, 130 kilometers an hour that I pass by. It's no longer a safe way to deal on that road. If you put it at 80, well, it's most likely going to be 100 kilometers an hour, but <laughs> unless I cut. That's the east so, bypass road, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the east bypass. So I honestly believe it's not a bad move. There's, so, a, there's a lot of people that walk and bike on that road. I, I walk on that road. Yeah. It's no fun to see them passing at that speed. Okay, so, but I'm not speaking for myself, not defending my position. I, I'm saying there's quite a few residents that are quite concerned. And this is, sorry, this is only from where to where now? There's, there's a map. Yeah, there's a map at the oh, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Now, now the, the, their proposed end is for us, I guess, at the the, the county line or the yeah yes yeah, so it's a county but, line where it would be 60 kilometers but it, will, but it will still be I mean it'll still be 80 they're just not asking us because it's not our jurisdiction is that correct well it's 60 kilometers well no you could go 60, 60, 60, 60, 60 by extra foods and up yeah. around the corner yes and then and then it's goes 80 south, south and then and then the arrow stops at the, at the, the town boundary, corporate yeah. limits of the town which yeah. it goes back but i imagine it will still be 80 the rest of the way i it turns right up there i have to think it that it will be yeah it will, <laughs> it will take back the yeah. speed that is um, but it's not our jurisdiction yeah. so they don't no, have that's to that's comment on it I wouldn't okay. be surprised if it goes back to 60 on that last chunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. preparation for the intersection. Or maybe, I don't know. Yeah. But I think it was reasonable, that, you know, especially like, because all the way right past extra food, that, you know, it, it, you know, it was 100, so they don't it's need to go that fast. It's 50 now, though, isn't it there? Yeah. It is now. Well, now. it is, but it's, you least, know. That's if people respect a speed limit, it would be wonderful, but it's not always the case, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, are we okay with those changes? Yeah. We don't need a motion, we just need to let the administration know if we accept those changes. Yeah, actually, would you mind just making a motion that you support the recommended changes sure. from our Okay, we shall do so for you. Yeah. Uh, I'll make that motion. Please, Councillor Edmund. That we uh, agree to <coughs> recommend changes to the uh, speeds on the bypass road. On the east bypass. East bypass. <coughs> okay. What is the speed limit on the road to the transfer station? Uh -huh. That's 50 kilometers. That should be 50 as well. It should be 50, but uh, there again. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, I think it's 50. 50 kilometers. Kilometers. Well, yeah. You know, there is a sign that says 50. Yeah. yeah. Except yeah. that bounce on that. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? <coughs> Thank you. All right. The financial report, we don't have uh, one this time since you had the budget. And the committee reports, any questions? There is some committee reports that are not there. 
uh, countries I really, really want to see those reports when they are requested. It's very important for me to have a sense of what's going on in the community, and I cannot know what's going on if I don't have the reports. So please make sure that if you have something, or if you have not been able to go to those meetings, Make us make it known. Most of the time, I'm the ex officio and would be able to go on your on your behalf. And don't feel shy about asking. I mean, don't put me to be on your committee all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. But there is quite a few that are not there. So maybe we're going to go through those that are missing. If you have something to add, let me know. Mayor, I, yes. May I make a comment? Dr. Sure. Barnes and I were discussing our committee uh, reports. reports. If we have a secretary that takes minutes and things like that, could that be our report? Just forward that to Jeff. Okay. I'm going to tell you there's nothing wrong with that, except that sometimes the minutes don't reflect an important point that has been raised. Because it sometimes shows just a motion that has been passed, but it doesn't give any of the meat the of what happened. So, if you intend to use the minutes, you need to make 100% sure that if I read them with eyes that have not been there, I can understand what happened. Because if I don't understand what happened, I'm going to ask you. And if, if I may just add to that. Things that are specifically relevant to council, to us as a council. Um, right. you know, there's there's lots of stuff that gets passed in some of those meetings that has yeah, yeah. no real impact on this. Yeah, I'd say 80% of the minutes. Yeah. You know, so if you only council. want to highlight out of those minutes the point that you feel council should know, then do so. I don't want to make work extra for you. But I have found your reports very important. We don't need a whole page report. We need highlights of the important thing. To Council yeah. I guess we need another motion to extend, so I will make oh. that this time. I'll just say till 9 o'clock. We don't have to go that late, but yeah. I'll we'll have to Thank extend you. till 9. Let's hope we don't do it so late. <laughs> Good. All in favor? Thank you. Councilor Edmund? One of the problems I have with community futures when we have the meeting and then I have to report on it, a lot of the stuff is still confidential. Like if we were to prove it alone. That's a different story. Then I don't I no. don't put that but stuff in. What you could say it's a approved one loan, yeah. approved two loan, approved Which is something. What I usually do. And I think that is fair. There is some confidentiality that you need to respect. When you go in camera in your in your committee meeting, please do not include that in your report. I don't need well, to know that. A lot of the that. other stuff isn't really when you have a four-hour meeting, there's very little in there that is reported. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. and to speak to that, for instance, and just to give you a report on Chinook Foundation from, from our recent meetings, we've been focusing a lot on the new McGrath Lodge and yeah. some McGrath employment things and whatnot. It's very McGrath-related and really no problems related to anything here in Garston. That's so. right. But because you have a requisition that is significant, Right. We should know something about it. Sure, absolutely. And even, then, yeah. even so all good things, that's what yeah. I was reporting. All good things with Chinook buildings being constructed, yeah. everything's great. And uh, I must say, I want to thank you both. Uh, Kim Chinook was very happy with all the work you've done. And thank you. The Collegiate Committee, you see, now that is something I would really like to know a little bit about it. Well, there's really not a lot happening. Uh, our I guess I'll call him our employee. He is looking at uh, some contact he's made out in Boston for some creative ideas to push along that agenda. That's one of the reasons why the committee hasn't asked for any of that money at this point, is there's not a lot happening there right now. And it won't be until after we get back to this other Okay. Uh, Jeff, that is something that I noticed in the list of the committee. This one doesn't. It's not listed. So, so it wasn't a town committee? No. So I'm wondering, what kind of committee is it in comparison of 
any other regional committee we have. Yeah, it, it's not really. I mean, we they just invited him. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. So I'm not. I wasn't formally you're not that appointed. Town representative appointed to it. I'm just one of the guys that happens to be on the council. That just be an ad hoc committee, basically. It should be considered. It should be considered yeah. an ad hoc committee mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. And we should have it listed somewhere. They're potentially sending a delegation down to Idaho. I talked about being one of the persons that goes down. Well, we, we should have, uh, I don't know, but it seems to me that if it's called a committee and it's there, we should have some kind of structure to it. Well, either one way or the other. So. I don't know. But it seems to look like, the, the, the nature of it seems like it should be more of an ad hoc committee because... Agreed. That's what I think it so. is. Very a little bit like it, a it is very much an ad hoc. But okay. Can I uh, talk about the Mormon Trail for just a moment? I, can, can you give me Can you give me a chance to oh, we carry on? Oh. Okay, the economic development and tourism. I know you sent a a report to Jeff. It didn't make it on time. That was wasn't correct, Jeff. That was for oh. Chief, Mountain. Chief Mountain Solid Waste. Oh, for Chief Mountain. Chief Mountain. Uh, uh, okay. So the uh, we we're adjourned. So we're we're adjourned right now. And and we will. So you kind of work on... Yeah, so we're, we're working on the, the solar project is kind of the, the main thing that we've been doing. It's one of the reasons why I mentioned earlier that the structure of that committee will probably change over the next short while. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Now the handy bus, we heard earlier on during the budget that you're working on a governance piece for them or with them. Uh, Intermunicipal, we did not meet. Um, the mayor, Sterling Raymond, my God, there was no meeting. This, we only meet quarterly. Mayor Hughes, uh, this year, it might not happen. Just a question on that. Oh, it might not happen? I was just looking for a... Uh, here is what the um, problem is. The teachers that uh, dealt with this last year is doing a, a master's degree and uh, has really no time to give us that. But wants to do it next year big time. In fact, she has quite, quite a few good ideas. So that it falls a little bit under Terra. She has a little bit of a budget, if you looked in the budget. And uh, I think right now she's trying to get her feet warmed up in the FCSS. <laughs> so it might be, is, maybe it's a good thing for her. But I have some ideas of things that I might touch with Carol. Okay, because I think it was quite successful. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it very much. There might be somebody that would do an interim. Like, I'm just thinking some of the things they do it down at the alternate school at night. I would love to do something with them. Have an interest in... Well, if there was, if you have a connection at all, let me know. I'll be I'll very interested to work I will, with I will just whichever group. The question and see if, if there might be any interest down there to, to run it for a year. Well, if they are interested, I have quite a bit of material and ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, moment trail. You wanted to talk. I just about wanted it. to just um, mention um, the Chautauqua committee. You know, Mark Eastoke was appointed to work on that. I don't know if you're aware, Mark Easton has to have uh, bypass surgery on his heart. Mm. Right. Yeah, right away. Mm. And yeah, I don't know whether he'll be able to work on that committee. And he hasn't attended any meetings. No. To date. To date. To date. Now, has um, Luana been going yes. to the meetings? Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. I mean, we, we kind of gave it that flavor to see, you know, give them both a chance. So yeah. we got one that oh, wow. did. So which is good. Oh, okay. Wow. See, and Mark, Mark's involved in some other committees too, isn't he? He's not historical. Historical vice president. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the update, and uh, we wish him well. Maybe we shouldn't send him a card or something. Okay. Uh, Maybe a card to Mark. Okay. So I can do we send a card to everybody? Do we, yeah, do I don't know when the surgery is, but I heard it's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Parks and Regs did not meet. For reason I don't know meaning. Power no meaning. So screw. And let's be done. All right. Now, there are a few uh, things that we need to look at. 
Oh, well, it's part of the, sorry, just part of the committee, but also you see the correspondence, just uh, the report from the grant that was given to the uh, to the Ag Society and the success of that. Yes. Yes. yes thank so you could, very much. Couldn't have done it without the grant, but we're hoping and, uh, with uh, momentum over the next three years. They know they have a, I think it's a three-year yeah, deadline uh, to get that self-funded. So. Councillor Evans, <coughs> they are looking for the same kind of budget line in our budget. That's what I read through them. But they know that it goes down every year. So yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, a business initiative right. for the business. Okay. Correspondence. <coughs> there is quite a bit of staff approval of uh, MSI report. Thank you to the town for having done such a super <coughs> job of reporting on the money and the use of it. Uh, you have the Agricultural Society. Uh, John McGowan uh, from AUMA who reported on the two successful, con three successful. Was there any change in those? I thought they were the um, same people. Were the same. That was the same people, uh, but at least the election went. For there there, voted there will be a there will say be a change on AUMA because uh, Ross and Shield did say he voted. Yeah. Oh, and he was oh, no, no, no. Okay. That's right. Uh, Mark Shield had already resigned his position at AUMA. Right. Right. And he has resigned officially as the new MP. Yeah, well, it was a new it was a new writing and was very successful. In fact, I think it wouldn't be a bad thing for us to send a, a congratulation. That's his idea. He comes from our hometown. Yeah, I know. I know. This is this is why I thought we could maybe do a little. Uh, Who's going to send the card to him? I will. Okay, and South Grove, you have an invite uh, uh, speaker series. This is an invitation, and I thought if some of you are interested, we might still have a few tickets available. The tickets cost two hundred dollar. I'm going to go to it. It's normally two hundred seventy five dollar. You can see the people, the caliber of people that are bringing in is quite amazing, and. Uh, I will go and take it out of my account. <coughs> if uh, some of you want to go, I might be able to get you the ticket. I was just going to move to go in camera. Okay. Uh, do you need to go in camera again? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you to the media for such a long meeting. We'll promise next time we'll be short. Don't make that.